Hi, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we'll see 12 ideas and tricks to make your open space look stylish, functional, and elegant. The open space concept is a common feature in contemporary spaces. I love it because you can make the space feel fluid, bigger, brighter, and modern. However, since we have a completely blank canvas, it could be challenging to create a fluid layout. In today's video, we'll see the necessary things to consider to achieve a functional and stylish open space. If you're new to my channel, welcome to our design community. I'm Saira Kuri, architect, interior and lighting designer. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss out on the upcoming interior design lessons. Are you ready? Let's start with today's video. Determine how you'll use the space. The starting point of an open space concept is to define each area depending on how you use it. For example, suppose you have a kitchen, dining room, and living room together. In that case, you must know how much seating you'll need for the dining table, how it relates to the kitchen island, and how you and your family use the living room to determine a layout that works for you. For example, if you use your living room to talk, enjoy having dinner parties, and share with family and friends, a distribution with openness to the dining room may be an excellent alternative to connect and use both areas simultaneously. Look at this example. The dining and living room feels integrated. Everything looks very organic since the round table gives a sensation of fluidity. Both areas look in harmony and complement each other. On the other hand, if you enjoy watching TV with your family in the living room, you can use a low back sofa to define the dining and living room areas. It's crucial to consider the dimensions of your space to select furniture in scale and proportions appropriate to the available area, especially in small spaces where it's vital to prioritize the most used areas to enhance the room's functionality. If your area is more significant, it's essential to understand everything as a single space. In ample spaces, avoid putting the furniture against the wall. Better yet, concentrate on the areas in the center to allow flow through the different zones. The point is that you understand the shape and size of the space and how you'll use it to optimize furniture distribution. How you use the different areas tells you what type of layout and amount of furniture is ideal for your specific case. Be consistent with the design style. In open spaces, the key point is to make the living room, dining room, and kitchen speak to each other. They must have a similar visual language and style. Suppose the dining room is minimalist. It doesn't make sense to have a living room with a glam style, because the contrast between both is too strong, and it will visually divide your space. However, it doesn't mean that you can't mix styles at all. What I mean is that if you're going to combine two different styles, you must mix them with the same proportion throughout the whole space. We don't want an area of one style and the other with another. We need a homogeneous mix. Choose one style as the dominant that you'll use in 80% of the space and another style as secondary, which you'll use in 20%. Mix them well and use it evenly in the whole room. Use a consistent color palette. Another vital point to consider in open spaces is establishing a consistent color palette. Go for a neutral tone for all the walls. A consistent color will help everything feel cohesive and unified. Then you can choose two or three accent colors. These serve to distinguish and give personality to your open space. Medium to small furniture, fabrics, rugs, and other accessories are ideal for using accent colors. Remember that consistency when using color is vital to create a cohesive space, especially in open spaces. 
If we have the walls painted in different shades and a palette without coordination, the room will feel cluttered. Our brain will divide the areas by the different colors, and the concept of unity will be lost. Remember that color is the most powerful tool in interior design and the greatest unifier, so pay attention to it. In this example, the consistency of the use of white on the walls makes the space feel like a unit. It feels airy, spacious, and bright. Medium elements such as the kitchen island, furniture, and details are used to add a touch of blue, giving the space character and personality. It looks elegant, unified, and stylish. Use common threads to connect all areas. We must make our living room, dining room, and kitchen speak to each other. We need common threads, but without feeling too forced or combined. It sounds a bit complicated, but achieving it is super simple. Choose some texture, material, color, or shapes and use them throughout the space uniformly. For example, you can use the same accent color for cushions in the living room, a vase over the dining table, a painting between both areas, or a flower arrangement. Repetitions such as this helps in carrying our eyes around the whole room. The objective is to connect similar elements. This is a design principle known as rhythm. This is a great trick because our brain will group all matching elements in the space. Consequently, we'll perceive the space as a unit. It's essential that you consider the things that you already have in the room, such as the kitchen countertop, the island, a wall covering, the color of your doors, floors, etc. You should consider these textures when including new ones. Look at this example, in which this technique was used very well. Notice that the teal color of the sofa connects with the kitchen cabinets and the paintings in the dining room. Look how the warm materials of the coffee table connects with the cushions, the stools, the shelves, the dining room table, and even the paintings also have a similar tone. Likewise, black accents are used in the window frame, the detail in the rug, the side table, the kitchen faucet, and one or another decorative details. Everything is evenly distributed, it feels balanced, unified, and harmonious. Apart from the repetition of colors, shapes, and textures, the repetitive patterns can help unify the home. When selecting patterns for rugs, curtains, and cushions, think of the entire space. Be consistent with the flooring. Like using a unifying color for the walls, being consistent in the floor's color is fundamental in open spaces, even more if we're talking about small spaces. Having the same floor makes the room feel more spacious, elegant, and clean. However, breaking this rule to define the kitchen area for example, can be helpful in some spaces. Still, the difference in color and texture between the two floors mustn't be abrupt. Choosing similar textures within the same hue or color family is ideal for defining spaces without dividing them. Everything should feel natural and fluid, so we must look for uniformity to achieve this. Define the areas. Defining each area doesn't mean that we need a divider or wall. We can define our spaces throughout a rug, furniture, or architectural features. Rugs are my favorites for defining areas in an open space because they are simple and add style. Suppose your dining room area is entirely open to the living room. Anchoring one area or both with a large rug can be an excellent alternative. Combine them through colors and patterns that complement each other. You can combine rocks in multiple ways. 
you can combine rocks with different patterns that share the same tones. You can use the same texture, but different shapes. For example, a rectangular rock for the living room and a round rock for the dining room in the same texture. You can use one in a solid color and another with some pattern or color combination that complements the other. When choosing the rocks, picking the right size is crucial. Remember that in the living room, all the furniture must be on the rock or at least the front legs of all seating pieces to anchor the composition. And the rug in the dining room must be able to contain the table and chairs. Otherwise, everything will look unbalanced and disproportionate. Another way to define the areas is by using furniture. You can use a sofa to define the living and dining room. You can use a couple of ottomans or a bench. Make sure they are low to avoid interrupting the visual permeability between both spaces. Another way to subtly define each area is to be guided by architectural features. For example, if you have a mezzanine, you can place your living room in the highest area and the dining room in the lowest part. Many residences come with this type of design, and this height difference is convenient to take advantage of to define areas. Also, if you have a flat ceiling, you can design a false ceiling that differs in height in different environments. This is a very subtle way of defining without dividing, but you have to be careful so that the space remains clean and simple. Use different lighting sources. We need to keep the same color temperature and intensity for the general lighting layer. Ideally, have a neutral light throughout the whole space and in the living room, add another layer of warmer light for the table, floor, or wall lamps if required. Also, we must maintain a relationship between the lamps we choose and use them as focal points, considering how they relate to the entire composition. Decorative lamps such as pendants over the kitchen island, a chandelier over the dining room table, floor, table, or wall lamps in the living room will help draw attention to each area while also providing adequate lighting for tasks. As it's an open space, visualize it from different points of the room to see how each lamp relates to the other. Sometimes it's unnecessary to have a lamp in each area. Everything will depend on the size of the space and the design of the lamps. Remember to have a common thread between them. You can combine lamps with similar shapes in different colors or lamps in matching colors or finishes but with different shapes. If you want to learn more about lighting design and how to choose lamps, I recommend that you watch these two videos. Lighting design makes a huge difference in any interior. I leave you the links of both videos in the description box below. Consider flow of traffic and circulation. Consider the flow and circulation between all areas. Don't block the way or set up furniture layouts that make awkward paths. Leave enough space between the furniture and a minimum of 30 to 35 inches for the main circulation space. Before buying furniture, one, think about how you'll use the area. Two, define the zones. 3. Measure the space. 4. Consider leaving enough space between furniture and the main circulation. Considering all of these, you'll know what type of furniture and dimensions are optimal for your layout. Be consistent with the windows treatment. It's essential to maintain the same visual language for the window treatment in the area. That doesn't mean that you should use the same type of window treatment for all. Not all windows should have curtain panels. You can opt for curtains in the living room and roller, pleated blinds, or something else in the kitchen or dining area. 
Just make sure they have a similar color, pattern, or texture. They must have a common thread between them. Remember to mount all the curtain rods on the same level, even if the windows are slightly different in size. This unifies the space and makes everything look much more organized, clean, and cohesive. Mounting the rods at different heights is a common mistake in interior design. I talk about it in this video. If you want to learn more about common mistakes and how to fix them, I'll leave you the link of that video up here and in the description box below. Avoid all matching furniture. A piece of advice to make an open space look interesting is to avoid combining all furniture. We immediately capture the entire composition in this kind of space, so we must bet on including various pieces that provide contrast and interest. If you have matching sets for the living and dining room, you'll miss the opportunity to add personality and make it unique. Combining wooden dining chairs with a sofa upholstered in a soft looking fabric could be very nice. Dare to mix curved shapes with straight lines, warm and rustic textures with more luxurious looking materials such as gold or marble. Remember that opposites attract. Create a focal point. Having focal points is crucial in open spaces. When it's time to start arranging furniture, an open space can seem intimidating. Let the focal point of the room guide you to make the most of your space. If you have a double height fireplace or impressive artwork, start there. Arrange larger pieces of furniture around that. Then add the medium and small pieces. An eye-catching hood in the kitchen, a fireplace with a contrasting covering wall in the living room, and a unique light fixture in the dining room can help draw attention and anchor each area. However, you must be careful about how which focal point relates to the other. For example, if you hang a chandelier over the dining table and the kitchen is in the background, think about how the chandelier relates to the kitchen's texture and color. Be aware of the different planes and perspective of the space and make sure that everything ends up working together. Look at this example. The texture and color of the kitchen cabinet serve as a backdrop to the dining room. Look how well the chandelier stands out with that background. In this case, they have avoided putting hanging lamps on the kitchen island to not saturate the space. It's essential to see the space from different angles to visualize the whole composition. By the way, if you want to learn more about focal points and how to create them in your home, check out this video. There you'll learn everything you need to know to create focal points like a pro. I'll leave you the link up here and in the description box below. To create uniformity, paint all the trim the same color. Using the same color for the window trim, doors, ceilings, and molding will help make the space feel more cohesive and connected. Having similar architectural details with different characteristics is often destructive and creates a lot of visual noise, so be consistent even in that kind of details. This is all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's design lesson. If you like this video, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss the upcoming design lessons. Have a beautiful week. See you in the next one.